Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the AM stream of PB World. So for this session, I'm joined by Martine Jarman, who is an aesthetic therapist and founder of Skin Genius Clinic. Um, we're going to be talking all things acne and specifically acne management um, and how to create a multifaceted um, treatment approach for your patients. So hi, Martine. Thank you so much for joining hi. us. Hi. Well, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thank you for letting me speak this afternoon. And uh, good afternoon or good day to you, wherever you are in this world. So, um, yeah, today I decided to pick a subject which is very favourite um, to myself. I enjoy treating acne skin types within clinic. Um, and over the years of practising within my clinic, Skin Genius, I've helped to certainly um, overcome and rectify acne conditions in adolescent skin types, but also we've been treating adult acne as well. We're using multifaceted approach, so we're using different treatment modalities. So I wanted to share with you my experience over the years for treating acne. So if just start on with the presentation. Um, just a little bit of uh, background from my industry. So I have over 25 years experience working within skin. Um, my passion for skin and treating with cosmeceutical skincare and whether we're working with lasers or peels, my mission is to practice skin health and also delivering safe practice as well. This is very important to me. Um, I have a training and consultancy background. I've worked with various cosmeceutical brands over the years. Um, I'm currently a key opinion lead for ZO Skin Health, which I do believe is um, a very key brand when working towards acne treatment and acne management for my clients. So a combination therapy approach, manifestations of acne, they can be very painful, they can be very disfiguring. Um, they can affect self-esteem and also mental health issues can be related to acne, especially in younger clients. Because acne is a, a, a multifactorial inflammatory disorder, we're dealing with different elements from managing oily um, skin types or um, you know, a, a lower grade acne to a cystic acne. However, we're also thinking about the treatment and management of scarring once we've been able to rectify the acne breakouts within the skin. I believe that a lot of clients who come to see me for the treatment of acne, they do have high expectations of a treatment outcome. They, they do want to be free from blemishes and they do want to be clear from scarring. We know this is a, a, a hard um, case to handle with individual clients. So client expectations, they really do have to be managed when we're taking them on this client journey. And we really do need to get commitment from them during that whole treatment plan and that process of treating acne. So the content with my presentation today, um, we, I, I want to take you through um, a presentation or part of the presentation to understand the pathology and the grading of acne. We're also dealing with different types of acne. So we're not just talking about acne vulgaris as a condition on its own. Um, my consultation, so I have a very thorough consultation process, which can take up to uh, an hour and a half, if not longer in some cases. So I wanted to take you through my phases of my consultation process. Following a consultation, we are then thinking about the phase treatment protocol, integrated treatment planning, home care, um, and also how there's variations on different acne protocols, whether we are treating um, an adult acne, or potentially masculine that we're seeing or cystic acne. In addition, let's have a, a, a talk about topical therapies. So a systemic approach through nutrition, but also thinking about the topical active ingredients we should be looking for within our cosmeceutical range. And then I know there's always a point in some cases where as an aesthetic therapist, I'm not medical, I don't prescribe. I'm fortunate I do have a prescribing doctor work with me. But there are at some stages or at some points that there is the time to refer, and this could be the possibility of an Accutane or an isotretinoin therapy. So let's proceed. So um, I'm just going to move the screen down because it's blocking my view there. Let me move that. So yeah, pathology of acne. So acne vulgaris, we know it's a chronic inflammatory disease 
of the hair follicle, the pilosebaceous unit. With acne, the factors that we do need to consider and uh, that contribute to these outbreaks are first and foremost, the increased in sebum production. So we'll be thinking about um, hormones, androgen hormones in stimulating excess sebum production, especially in adolescent acne. Down in the sebaceous gland as well, within the hair follicle, we're looking at abnormal follicular hyperkeratinization. So this buildup of the dead skin cells helping or uh, uh, working towards blocking the infidibulum of the sebaceous gland. And also we're thinking about bacteria. Bacteria plays a key part in terms of acne management. We may have heard of in the past uh, P. acne bacteria, Propion bacterium. However, now recent advances in microbiome technology, we, we are now changing the name, and I'm not sure if some people are aware of this, but we're not talking about P. acne bacteria, we're, we're talking about a C. acne bacteria, acute bacterial acnes. And of course, with the um, colonization of a C. bacteria, we're going to get further inflammation taking place within the pilosebaceous gland, um, increased pro-inflammatory mediators, which starts to create swelling and further induced cystic acne. So I just want to have a look. Um, hold on, move this screen off, let move on, there we go. So yeah, let, let's have a look now at the QT bacterium acne. So this is good to now to start to change your conversation and be aware that we're not talking about a P acne bacteria, we're actually talking about the C acne bacteria. And because acne, it is considered a disorder of the sebaceous gland, um, we need to understand that there has been an evolution within the microbiome. So with the C acne bacteria, the benefit is that it's trying to protect the skin from further pathogens invading the invading skin. It is there as part of our um, acid mantle and our protective barrier of the skin. However, when the C acne bacteria buries deep down into the pilosebaceous unit, what this starts to do, it hydrolyzes any triglycides within in the sebaceous gland, and then it will start to create further release of fatty acids, which then contribute to the oil on the skin and further bacteria. So it's about trying to manage the level of the bacteria on the surface, but also down within the sebaceous gland. Because the acne belongs to part of the skin's community, we do have to make sure that we're not over treating the skin, so not stripping the oil too much from the skin. So we do need a level of oil upon the skin. And also again, the C. acne bacteria, um, it's lipophilic, it loves the oil within the skin. So again, there's kind of more oil within the skin and the sebaceous glands, the C. acne bacteria wants to bury, that, bury down. So it's really about finding an even balance when we are treating an acne skin, so not to over dry and strip and compromise barrier function. At the same time, it's about regulating the, the bacteria on the skin to get the effect that we need through our treatment protocols. So classifications of acne lesion. So when I'm treating my clients, we look at, um, are, we, are we working with a, a non-inflammatory? So not red and aggressive, is the skin compromised? And also we're looking at what we classify as our inflammatory lesions. So non-inflammatory lesions, okay, this is more, um, more seen as a tendency within our younger teenage skin types. So we're going to see open comedones, blackheads, which are present upon the skin and also the closed comedones. So that buildup of um, dead skin cells and sebum um, coagulating underneath the skin. In terms of treating inflammatory lesions, so the papules, they start to become more red, inflamed, pustules, more pus filled with the neutrophils. Um, and then further development and growth, growth which is distorting the um, uh, sebaceous glands through nodule and cystic acne. And in turn, we can be looking at macules and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation presence further down the line. We find that um, inflammatory acne lesions 
are more so found within a, an adult acne. So let's have a think about the evolution of an acne lesion. So one of the biggest factors to contribute to the formation of an acne lesion is the stimulation of androgen hormones. So we're thinking about testosterone levels. Both men and women have testosterone levels, um, higher levels within men, but yes, as women, we do have testosterone levels. So by the stimulation of androgen within the body and the certain fluctuations through the time of the month for females, it starts to stimulate the growth of the sebaceous glands and the increase of sebum production within the skin. The sebum's getting blocked and trapped within the hair follicle. So again, thinking about treatment protocol of certainly um, exfoliation to help to clear the surface keratin site cells. So any active ingredients that we're working with can start to regulate the sebum and regulate the control of the oil within the skin. So surface, if we're not exfoliating, we're going to see dead skin cells and keratin clumped together on the surface. This then begins to start to plug the pore. Visible comedones and blackheads will start to appear on the skin. And then this will proliferate the C acne bacteria within the skin. So over time, it starts to lead from that change of that lesion into an inflamed pustular lesion. So again, a norm, so, so, some charts here for you. So a normal hair follicle, um, microcomedone, so the trapped sebum just underneath the skin. So we're looking at either a formation of a closed comedone or a black head, um, so microcomedone. And again, what's happened with the black head or the microcomedone, um, the sebum has oxidized and it's formed that dark plug upon the skin. So further on now, inflammation starts to take place within the skin as the C, back, C acne bacteria starts to bury down. Inflammation, white blood cells, so we start to see the presence of a papule appearing upon the skin. And then furthermore, over time, the papule turns into a pustule due to more inflammation and more growth of the C acne bacteria within the skin. And then over time, in some grade four acnes, we are dealing with cystic and nodulistic acne. So we start to see the disfigurement down within the sebaceous gland and further down into the hair follicle, which can result into scarring and disfigurement on the face. So what we're aiming to do is really manage that acne at a grade, maybe one, two, three, if we can. So grading, so some of you may have heard of um, a, a grading uh, scale for acne. So grade one is when we're dealing with a um, general comedone and papules, which can also present melia around the eye area. I, I saw this only the other day treating uh, a younger, younger client of mine. And um, grade two, where the papules and the pustules, again, start to increase with the inflammation and the increase of the C acne bacteria. Papules and pustules, which is grade three, and our grade four acne, so the nodules and cysts. So we class this as cystic acne, which we could be considering even before treatment that it could be a referral process here, especially if it, it's severe on a client, again, because we may be looking at introducing prescription strength um, uh, topicals or also sy systemic medication. In terms of grading acne, we like to classify like quantitative measurements in terms of the lesions that are present on the skin, whether they are inflammatory or non-inflammatory. This will then relate to when I'm performing a consultation, the severity on the acne that we're dealing with. So we like to grade acne severity, anything from just um, grade one, which is non or very minimal a grade two acne, so we can see increased in inflammatory lesions and non-inflammatory lesions. So anything with the inflammatory lesions around about 10 or 20 lesions. So this becomes mild, which is certainly treatable within my practice with clinic. <clears throat> Where it st starts to get a little bit more complex and harder to deal with, we're looking at the grade three acne, certainly more inflamed lesions, um, and during treatment, th there could be one particular lesion that we're struggling with. It keeps coming up and getting inflamed, it goes back down, the client's coming in having treatment, yes, in that same area, we're still trying to deal with that particular lesion. 
And it's also trying to manage the scarring in this case. So the grade four acne, so as I've, I've said earlier, we're potentially looking for um, referral in the case of a severe acne. We might put our clients on their management of some home care products, put them on a good routine, but we're potentially looking then at um, recommending a course of treatments, prescription treatments. Just in addition as well, so, um, we, we know that we've got a higher abundance of sebaceous glands within the T-zone area. So we do find that the T-zone area is the primary location for when we're treating um, young adults, so adolescent acne. However, um, a classic um, uniform of a, what we call a, a U-zone across the jawline from ear to ear, Again, with more inflamed lesions, we're dealing more so with um, more um, inflamed adult acne at this point, which again can be quite hard to manage as well. So classifying acne scarring. So let's just think about now, our, after following our grade one to four of acne, we also classify our acne scarring. And this is relative for when we're performing our kind of post acne treatment where we're thinking about scarring. So what modalities do we need to treat our scar and scar management? So hypertrophic scarring. So these are scars which are produced when too much collagen um, has been produced and that um, appears in a raised scar tissue upon the skin. So it's like a massive a scar tissue here upon the skin. Ice pick scarring, so these are quite deep pits within the skin. They can extend quite deep right down into the dermal, past the dermal, epidermal junction. And almost that appearance that it's been uh, performed by an ice pick. So then our box scars. So these are um, scars which are kind of angular shaped and they can go quite deep into the skin. Usually these are found or presented on the cheeks or the temple area. And then rolling scars. So this is generally caused by damage, um, usually with cystic acne, where the undulating waves on the skin, um, and you can see there's been further disfigurement within the pilosebaceous unit. And then in addition, we have the PH, so post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation macules. So these are usually a flat or purple brown, usually a flat scar upon the skin usually associated with skin of colour. So physiological factors. Um, I've had clients sit on the bed with me. They have been in tears. Um, and, and I know from suffering with acne in the past, the psychological effects it had on myself. I suffered with it on my back, on, on my neck. Um, so again, I know um, certainly you can feel shame or you can feel dirty embarrassment, especially in younger adolescents. They don't want to go out. They don't want to wear the pretty straps on the dresses. This can relate to further anxiety and loss of confidence and also impaired social contact with their friends or peers. And um, you'll also find as well the dislike of being photographed, um, again, just due, due to the presenting those inflammatory acne spots. A lot of makeup can be la laid over the top photographs, which then puts that acne sufferer into a vicious circle. So let's have a look at our classifications of acne. So hormonal acne, I think this is probably one of the most prevalent acnes that we are dealing with. Um, so we find that um, uh, for females, for example, if we're thinking about a hormonal acne, through that 28 day cycle, we're dealing with different hormones. So we're dealing with progesterone and we're dealing with our estrogen hormones. And certainly within the, the first part of a, a woman's cycle, um, days one to 14, we're looking at two hormones that are released from the pituitary gland, a, follu a follicular stimulating hormone and a luteinizing hormone. And these control the functions of our ovaries and the hormone production. So at this point, estrogen becomes the dominating hormone over the progesterone. And then from days 14 to 28, the progesterone levels start to rise and this becomes the dominant hormone. And 
This then helps with the rise and stimulation of oil within the skin. So we start to see kind of around days 18 to 21, flare ups are starting to take place within the skin. Then usually around about day 18, then we're thinking about testosterone because the estrogen and the progesterone levels start to drop and then testosterone starts to become the more dominant hormone running up to a, a female's period. So we're having to think about regulating oil and think about the, the types of ingredients we are using through our cycle. I know, again, personally, my skin becomes very oily through my cycle, and it is usually around about that day 18 to 21. So I know I'm thinking about adjusting my routine, going for a cleanse, maybe with a higher um, high strength salicylic acid to regulate the oil flow upon my skin. So hormones they can affect men and women very differently. So if we're thinking of, um, you know, adolescent acne, um, certainly within um, men or male um, acne sufferers, we find that the testosterone levels will the rage during puberty, and then what happens, they will start to level out. So male acne sufferers, yes, they can suffer quite badly, but then they find that it will just start to level out over time. However, with women, again, with women, what happens, we're still thinking about other hormonal changes throughout our life, you know, throughout our menstrual cycle, during pregnancy as well, hormonal changes. <clears throat> and also later on in life, when we're thinking about menopause, and this is where we're, we're um, seeing um, the development of, of adult acne upon female skin, you don't really find that men suffer with that, um, adult acne. It tends to be female sufferers. So another form of acne, um, I'm currently treating a, a young gentleman for acne mechanica at the moment. Um, he wears a baseball cap a lot of the time. He plays a lot of sport, football, um, he's also of a, a darker skin type and acne mechanica is caused by heat, friction against the skin. Um, and we're getting that build up of the keratin cells um, and it's getting stuck and the oil and it's getting stuck underneath the skin. Um, this can be prevalent on the back. It can be prevalent on the chest. Um, but again, I've, you know, I've had some very successful treatment with it. It is quite an easy, easy treatment um, in terms of peeling, comedone extraction, um, and also the right home care. So we are seeing, seeing quite a bit of this. Excoriated acne, um, I see this a lot. So excoriated acne, um, only yesterday, um, I have a, a client in on the treatment bed and I could see straight away nail marks right in her skin. I said, have you been using your hands and picking? No, no, no only to tell me she'd been using her tweezers to remove the blackheads, which were tiny on her skin. So excoriated acne, it's um, when the skin's been picked or scratched. You know, this could be a, a very low level grade one acne vulgaris, but you've got clients who will have a magnifying mirror at home, the, the targeting these minuscule blemishes on the skin, the picking, they're causing damage, they're causing a wound to the skin. Then what's happening, it's turning into a pigmentation or a post-inflammatory pigmentation for this constant wound and damage to the skin. Um, it, this can be hard to treat. So again, for yesterday, for example, the client on my bed has come to see me for an acne peel um, with a bit of a combination of some hydrofacial, but then you've got open skin and you're trying to not aggravate that broken skin further yet you're wanting to deal with the breakouts um so i, I can be um quite tough on my clients telling them that you know they really should not be picking their skin it's a constant cycle and i do find these clients although it's low level grade one acne or grade two very hard to treat um i mean in addition as well um you know th this has been associated with um a, a disorder um, of overpicking within the skin. Acne conglobulata. So again, this is a very severe form of acne, um, definitely for referral in my eyes and what we can do within the clinic. So this invo involves inflammation of nodules and cysts upon the skin, whether this is the back, the face, buttocks as well. And nodules are linked to other nodules within the skin. And um, 
this is more so common with it within men um, certainly with taking like steroids or um, growth hormones. Again, I can relate to a gentleman I was treating last year for a bodybuilding competition. Uh, and he was taking a lot of like growth steroids and hormones. And um, he was really um, suffering with um, quite big cysts and nodules on his back, which we did manage to clear. I mean, it's not as severe as this picture that, that we're looking at here, but it is um, really on this level of treatment for, for doctor prescription or dermatologist treatment. Maskne, okay, so I didn't want to leave this one out. Very topical at the moment. I'm not sure if you're uh, seeing any clients coming into your clinic for maskne. We are starting to get a few through the door. This is very similar to acne mechanica um, because it's, it's, um, it, it's down to the friction of the mask on the skin around the mouth area. We're thinking about the heat, traps moisture underneath the mask. Um, heavy moisturizer has been worn underneath the mask, heavy foundation. Um, if they're using these face coverings, what are they washing the face covering in? And the heat is going to generate a breeding ground for the bacteria within the mass, uh, mass in the area. Um, my advice here, and, and certainly when I'm treating myself with my oily skin, I'm just wearing my mineral makeup. I'm not even wearing my lipstick. I don't wear moisturizer anyway, just a light hydrator I'd wear on my skin. Um, and it might be advisable just to recommend um, just a low level, low percentage benzoyl peroxide just to manage any bacteria on that area and advise not to wear the mask when they can. However, I know it's uh, unavoidable at the moment in most cases. So let's lead on now. So we, we've looked at the different grades of acne, types of acne uh, that we can present it with within clinic. Um, let's look at our consultation and treatment planning. So in terms of consultation, there's factors that you need to be considering right at the beginning. You need to be finding out, out about the hormones. So fluctuations with hormones, is it related to hormones? Is it during times of periods, pregnancy, menopause? Um, is it due to contraception that has been stopped? Genetics will play a role. Um, maybe parents have had or suffered with acne in the past, so this could be a red flag. Stress, because of the stress-related hormone, the corticorfin, releasing hormone, this can trigger further acne breakouts. Um, maybe exam time for uh, adolescent acne, we do see this a lot. There are some certain health conditions that you need to also consider. Polycystic ovary syndrome, uh, Cushing syndrome, also could be linked to gut problems. So gut treating systemically is very important to us within the clinic. Have you considered if your client's taking certain medications because they or supplements, this could lead to further acne breakouts and eruptions. Lifestyle as well. So um, high glycemic index foods, they can increase um, acne breakouts. Smoking, most definitely you can see acne breakouts around the skin, um, maybe shift workers and lack of sleep, exercise. So we need to be advising as well if they're exercising, wash the skin immediately after exercise, after exercise to prevent the buildup of acne. Maybe where they're living, so pollution within a city and also um, alcohol with increased sugar will start to flare breakouts out after drinking excessive amounts of alcohol. So all factors to consider during a consultation. So when it comes to treatment planning, um, all new clients coming into Skin Genius Clinic, they're booked in for a acne consultation or what we call a skin health consultation. This will include treatment and a skin assessment. And during the skin assessment, um, it gives us an opportunity to sensitivity test for any hydroxy acids on the skin, patch test for any peels, or potentially um, patch test for any IPL or laser procedures. So 90 minutes, all clients prior to coming into the clinic, they now fill out an online email uh, with a medical questionnaire, a skin assessment, COVID questionnaire, <laughs> um, in the treatment rooms, we have a um, consultation area set up. 
Um, this will involve um, skin analysis tools. So we're looking at um, skin analysis or photographic evidence. We have a, a black blind to take photographs. We'd like to take standardized photographs front on and from either side of the client that we're dealing with. Um, we have um, tools to present them with um, a, a folder where we've wrote up a treatment plan and a home care prescription plan. So consultation, although it is an hour and a half, I feel it's very important to have that conversation and the opportunity to sensitivity test their skin for ingredients. So our consultation, I'll just give you a quick insight to what we do. We break it down into a three-step process. So step one, on the first 25 minutes is skin assessment. So analysis, skin scanner, mirror, photographs, discussing aims and objectives. The second part of our consultation is the facial. Um, we perform a, what we call our skin genius cleanse, um, perform sensitivity testing to ingredients. We will apply a very low level entry level um, resurfacing peel. I mean, literally we're talking kind of a 10, 15% um, salicylic acid onto the skin. The skin's not been prepped, so we have to keep it very mild as a formula. But this gives the client just a, a kind of a, a step into receiving a very uh, an active treatment but obviously not as aggressive that we want to get down down the step of doing our um, acne treatment plan um we apply apply a nice calming soothing phyto mask a botanical mask and at this point it's also opportunity to write out my treatment plan patch test for other ingredients and also start to um, test for future treatments for scar treatments such as laser the final part of my um, consultation facial, we sit the client back down, we discuss the findings, we're agreeing on a home care regime, uh, we're managing their expectations, we're explaining how they need to work with skincare products at home to prepare the skin before they come in for the full treatment. Um, and also, in my head as um, a practitioner, I know that I could be talking about right skincare, this is a treatment plan, now we've got an acne scar plan. I prefer to break down um, our, our treatment plan into phases so it just doesn't overwhelm them. And they think, you know, one, can I afford all this? Two, can I commit to all this? Three, th th there is a lot that I've got to do here. So it's about managing expectations and a, a timescale for acne treatment but also in the terms of what grade of acne are we dealing with? So it is very important that you know your types of acne when you're thinking about your treatment plan along the way. Um, we, we present our clients with a folder um, and inside the folder, we'll, they'll have the home care formula. So we have a, a, a pull off sheet, their home care formula and also their treatment plan formula. And so they get to go home with all this information so let's have a, a think about skincare ingredients. So in phase one of a client's treatment protocol, we're sending them home with their skincare regime. We're asking them to prepare their skin with active ingredients for at least two weeks prior to them coming in for their first treatment. That first treatment may be a hydrofacial or it may be a mild um, salicylic based peel. So again, consideration of the type of acne that we're dealing with. How sensitive is the skin? Because remember, an inflamed acne can be very sensitive. So you do not want to overwhelm the skin and start to create further sensitivities because this will compromise the barrier function of the skin. Also, the client needs to understand the expected reaction with home care products. We tend to pres um, prescribe the ZO um, complexion kit which is a combination of salicylic, um, sulfur mass, there's cleansing, uh, a cleansing wash with salicylic, there's our complexion or oil control pads. So the reaction with working with active ingredients, the skin can become quite dry. It can become um, maybe sometimes a little bit more sensitive, but it's about trying to manage that, yes, you need to see a reaction within the skin. You will start to see a reduction within, within the inflammation and the acne breakouts. But yes, um, there is going to be some slight side effects of dryness within skin that the skin will certainly get used to. Acne ingredients that we 
tend to use within the clinic. So hydroxy acids, I'm a big fan of working with hydroxy acids and there are quite a few different acids out there on the market. Um, certainly uh, pyruvic acid, it's very gentle, it's antimicrobial on the skin. Mandelic acid, this is good for de um, treating our maybe um, Fitzpatrick skin types four, five and six because it can inhibit tyrosinase and pigment within the skin. Glycolic acid, it's a good exfoliant for the surface of the skin and can fade post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And then salicylic acid, I'm sure you've all heard of the treatment of acne, one of my favorite acne ingredients, um, decongest, keralytic action, regulates the oil flow within the skin. Um, it, it gives us the results and it helps to take down any inflammation within the acne lesions. In addition, azelic acid, so very gentle, very good for our sensitive inflamed acne skins. Again, decongesting, but can also manage any pigments within the skin. Topical retinoids. So retinol originally was used for treatments um, or the, for the management of acne. Obviously, uh, further benefits with retinoid treatment for purging the skin and cellular stimulation, helping to repair the DNA within inside a skin cell. Um, but also, again, that can help in, as part of a pigmentation protocol. Benzoyl peroxide. So that there's not too many brands within the UK, uh, including benzoyl peroxide within their protocols. However, with the ZO, we do have a product um, which is the acne control. It's a 10% micronized benzoyl peroxide. So it's fast absorbing right into the sebaceous unit. Um, because acne bacteria that's hosted by an anaerobic environment, benzoyl peroxide saturates the pilosebaceous gland with oxygen. So that helps to destroy the acne bacteria within the skin. So I'm a very big fan and I see very good results with benzoyl peroxide, certainly working in association with a retinal product. So two great ingredients that can work together depending on the severity of the acne that we're treating. Sulfur, so um, sulfur, um, this helps to regulate oil flow upon the skin. It is also anti-inflammatory on the skin. Um, we work with the sulfur mask so it can mattify oil on the skin. It's a great spot treatment if it's used within a mask form. <clears throat> Bet my pardon. Anti-inflammatory ingredients. So again, if the skin is sensitive or compromised, we want to look at bringing in potentially maybe some botanical ingredients that help to soothe and regulate inflammation on the skin. Um, cucumber, thyme, very calming, soothing. Beta glucan, again, very calming. Urea is also a good calming ingredient to the skin. In some cases of acne, we do have to think about managing the um, first line of defense upon the skin. So we do need to think about that we're not um, compromising the barrier further, we want to bring in barrier protectors to help to normalize and hydrate and calm the skin through acne treatment protocols. And barrier protectors or epidermal repair creams can be very useful post-treatment when the client's undergoing uh, potentially some peeling or shedding from uh, acne peel treatments. Also in terms of topically treating the skin, um, in my first phase of so home care, we do also advise clients to think about their nutrition. So a systemic approach to their skincare. Um, for an example here, and I'm sure there are other brands out there, but we do recommend um, SkinAid who have a targeted solutions. And a targeted solution clear is a drinkable sachet. So it's a very highly absorbed sachet of um, a combination of different vitamins, minerals, um, which helps to complement acne within the skin. I mean, there's a list of about 25 different <laughs> ingredients, um, but this will help to regulate the hormone imbalances within the skin. It will help reduce inflammation within the skin, regulate oil production. We're also thinking about detoxifying the dermal layers. And in addition, the clear, um, range this has a um a, a capsule which helps to deliver friendly bacteria to the gut gut so we're thinking about managing gut health as well within the skin um antibiotics as well so we can recommend antibiotics 
um, that will be topical antibiotics. Um, if, if we're thinking about antibiotics on the skin, we do need to evaluate about every three to four months, just because there can be a buildup of bacterial resistance within the skin. In combination protocols as well, um, we need to consider home care formula, combined treatments, um, IPL laser treatments for scar management, and then also nutritional programs. So you need to be thinking about the whole integrated treatment plan when managing your client expectations. I'm just keeping an eye on time here, so I'll just run through a few more um, slides. So phase one is home care. So um, need to get your clients working with home care. Phase two will be your combination therapy approach. So peels, extractions, I'm happy to perform extractions using a micro lance, and also be thinking about reducing inflammation within the skin. And then finally, third phase of treatment is scar management, whether that's going to be through lasers or skin needling, and in addition with, with LED. You need to think about your modalities that you're working with in the clinic, hydrofacial treatments, and what we use as one of our modalities, skin peels, anti-inflammatory masks. Uh, if we need to do um, or perform any cysts, uh, incisions, we work with a shortwave diathermy, and that can also help with the removal of mealy within the skin. Um, LED, um, IPL systems using blue light therapy, and for treatment of scar management, we utilize um, skin needling with a radio frequency that's very effective at treating and managing scars. And skin pen. So if a client's not suitable for a heat based, energy based treatment, then skin needling is a, a useful modality to help manage the scar within the skin. Again, just be thinking about when you're working with these different treatment modalities. At what level are you targeting the skin? So peels, dermabrasions, working in the upper epidermis, and then the lasers and the needling, certainly working deep down into the skin. You've got to be careful not to over-treat um, or too much energy or too many treatments in the same protocol. Um, we do perform a treatment called the Laser Genius Facial, um, and our acne protocol is the combination therapy of working with a hydrofacial for deep pore cleansing extractions. Um, we introduce a light skin peel, and in addition, we introduce blue light therapy from the IPL of the uh, M22 machine. When treating skin of color, it's very important that you're considering um, a gentle approach because you really need to minimize the risk of an adverse event effect within the skin. So we don't want them to treat the acne and then be less left with any inflammation or post-inflammatory inflammation by using too much energy, in particular with laser and energy-based equipment. Aftercare, so please ensure that you are um, recommending the correct aftercare for your treatment modality. And always, certainly for the advanced treatments of laser or needling, to be on hand through Messenger if your clinic's closed throughout a weekend, just to manage um, clients who are new to more advanced treatment protocols. And then just the final word here, so when to refer. So um, Accutane, isotretinoin, if we are dealing with a severe grade acne, grade four acne, it may be the case that we're just going to advise on home care and skin care. But a course of isotretinoin, it can last anything from four to six months for in severe cases. Um, you know, in the past, I was kind of always wary about this because, OK, there can be side effects. But to be honest, if it's having psychological effects on that client and going through a course of uh, Roaccutane isotretinoin, then the side effects, they can outweigh the benefits. But be mindful, you can't treat with any treatment modalities when working with um, Roaccutane or an isotretinoin therapy. So I hope I've just kind of come in time there for everyone. Um, and if we have got any questions or answers, if you just want to let me know. Thank you. Oh, lost you. Martine, that was brilliant. That was such a comprehensive overview um, of 
acne and not just acne management but the condition in itself so thank you so much that was brilliant yeah there's a lot to get in there and I was yeah conscious of time thinking oh my gosh <laughs> no, 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 it's fine um thank you some, something that I did we probably only have time for one question but yeah, something I did want to ask you I know so you mentioned that you don't use moisturizer and I know that's part of the ZO <laughs> yeah. concept and <laughs> it's something that is kind of controversial a lot of people you know, disagree with there are more and more people are starting to kind of have adopt that same approach when it comes to um skincare with their clients so is that especially with acne in particular would it be your advice that no patient who is suffering with any kind of acne should be using a moisturizer in the traditional sense like what about if you're doing if you're at the stages where you're doing the quite aggressive peeling do you not yeah. need to keep the skin hydrated? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, we, with all of our clients, we do follow this no moisturizer concept um, just because we find it makes the skin very sluggish and doesn't function efficiently. Um, but let, let's just talk about in acne sufferers. Yeah, that, I, take, I take a moisturizer away straight away because moisturizers are containing more lipid-based ingredients and oils. And because oil on the skin, as we know through the presentation, oil is pro-inflammatory upon the skin. So why are we going to add more oil to a skin to further moisturize? Okay, so it's definitely a no-no. Serums, however, nice um, hyaluronic acid serums that contain botanic botanicals to increase hydration, to draw up moisture within the skin, absolutely. But yes, post-procedure, where the skin is compromised, it's it can be red, inflamed, shedding, still no moisturizers. You know, we have, working with these cosmeceutical brands, we have nice, reparative, calming hydrators. They're not, they don't contain, you know, emulsifying lipids and oils. That it's more about the molecular structure, it might be um, an oil in water molecule. So it's just a gentle release. We might be looking at urea or beta glucan as the ingredients that can help to, to nourish and moisturize, but not add further oil. And it's, it's about just getting at a fine balance there. Mm. And then just finally, when you were talking about mask me, is it your belief that, like, what's the best kind of mask for someone to be wearing? Is it better that someone is wearing disposable, that they literally have, like, one single use and then get rid of? Are you okay with clients using reusable masks if they wash them frequently? Like, which are best? Because I know... Yeah. I've got some um, like linen ones, which I actually find to be heavier yeah. than the than the surgical, you know, disposable ones. Like they feel heavier, and I feel sweatier. But yeah. then they're better for the environment, so it's tricky. And it is very tricky. Um, it, the question is, if you are dealing with acne and it's affecting your skin, I would definitely be recommending single use. Yeah, for the sake of the skin. Um, uh, certainly, you know, the, the eco-friendly bamboo masks as well, they can be a little bit more breathable. The cotton mask yeah. can be a little bit more breathable. But again, if you are wearing these face coverings, um, you know, I would recommend at least have a collection so they can be cleaned and sanitized, um, not in heavy detergents either. Um, so they can be more environmental friendly. Mm -hmm. So it's that choice that they've got to make. So cotton, uh, bamboo masks, most def definitely, because it can be more of a breathable material. Yeah. Just remove as and when they can be. But in terms, if it is a severe acne, you need yeah. to have, yeah, you really yeah. need to as well. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, we're going to have to wrap up now, but yeah. that was fantastic. Thank you so much. You always give us great presentations and talks when you speak for us. Thank you. Um, do you want to just quickly, have you got anything where you can just flash up some social details or maybe just the Skin Genius website if anyone wanted to get in touch and see more about what you do? Yeah, probably the, the best way, um, either through social, so Instagram, Skin Genius Clinic, um, website, we're just, uh, we're in the process of a new website being built. You can go onto the old website, which is skingeniusclinic.co.uk. But um, yeah, the Instagram and we're also on Facebook as well. So thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Martine, again. And thanks everyone for joining. And we will be back on at 4 p.m., um, I believe, for our next session. Thanks thank very you. much, Martine. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.